want to try this problem first before I go through the solution here. You can find the link uh, in the description below to the document where you'll actually contain the whole problem. Or if you just want to watch me solve it, I'm going to go ahead and start now. So this is a redox problem, and so we're starting with the standard reduction potential. We have six different half reactions listed here. Some of these are probably going to end up changing uh, from the reduction to the oxidation. Uh, and when we do that, of course, we'll change the sign of the voltage. Uh, we're going to use these to do our analysis. So our start of our problem says we have a 0.01 molar solution of copper 2 chloride. Uh, two graphite electrodes are connected to an external battery. Figure out which reaction will occur at the anode. So translating anode here, we should think what will be oxidized, what will be the oxidation half reaction. And so we want to look at what we have available. So in our solution, we have three things. Oops. We have copper 2 plus ions, we have chloride ions, and we have water. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what could be oxidized of those three things, and what would the oxidation reactions look like. So if we go back to our chart for a second, we're looking for oxidation. So we could, in theory, oxidize the copper to copper 2 plus, but we don't have any copper, we just have copper 2 plus. So that's up. For the chloride, we could reverse this reaction. We do start with chloride, and with chlorine, that would be oxidation. So this is one of our options. So let's write that down. We're going to take this reaction, and we're going to reverse it. So we're going to take chloride, turn it into chlorine. And the voltage on that, I believe, was negative 1.36. Okay. So negative 1.36. And then the other reaction we can do is the oxidation of water. So for water, we have the reduction here, water to hydrogen gas. So this would be our oxidation. We would take water and turn it into oxygen. The voltage on that, we're going to reverse. It's going to be negative 1.23. was negative 1.36 volts, and then our water turning into O2, is negative 1.23 volts. So what we have here is we have two different oxidation half reactions. We're trying to figure out which one will work. So essentially, we're, which one of these is easier to take electrons from? And to do that, we look at the regular, we look at the, compare their voltages. So the smaller the negative value is, or the bigger the positive value, the more positive value, it will be easier for that reaction to happen. It will be more spontaneous. And so we would pick this reaction here, in this case, because it has a more positive or a larger voltage than the chloride. Now they're very close, which means probably we'll see some of both. So the other thing we want to look at is, what's the concentration? So we have 0.01 molar copper 2 chloride. It's going to be 0.02 molar chloride. Therefore, it's pretty dilute. We're going to stick with this as our answer. So we're going to have the half reaction of the anode will be water producing oxygen gas and some acid. Okay. At the cathode, we again have to compare reactions, but now we're going to go back to the copper 2 plus reaction. So one of our reactions is copper 2 plus being reduced at the cathode, and that has a voltage of plus 0.34 volts. And the other reaction we have happening is water turning into hydrogen gas. on a copper 2 chloride solution, we would expect this reaction to happen at the end of where we produce oxygen gas. And at the cathode, we would expect copper metal to plate. So we would expect to see that. Okay. Now, part C, it says a very high concentration, so well beyond 0.1 molar of copper 2 chloride. A different half reaction takes place at the anode, identify the gas produced. So what that's saying is that as we increase the concentration of this, that's going to affect this voltage to the point where eventually it becomes preferable over the water. So the gas that's produced in this reaction would be chlorine gas. We would expect to see as we got to higher and higher concentrations. Now, in reality, you're probably going to see a mixture of both. And that mixture is going to increase in affinity towards the chlorine gas 
as we increase the concentration of the copper 2 chloride, and specifically the chloride. Okay. So now we run our battery for about eight minutes with a certain current. We want to know how much copper is going to get produced. We're going to be using this reaction to kind of analyze this. It's standard for a lot of problems. So let's get rid of this. Copper 2 plus. So now we're going to run current for a long time. Now, a couple things that you need to be able to translate. One is 0.138 amps. You need to be able to say what an amp is. And what an amp is to someone running a coulometry experiment is that's how many coulombs of charge flow per second. And so this is something that's going to be able to translate better for how we want to count. From there, Here's how we're going to set up our calculation here. We're running for eight minutes. So we're going to set up a really long conversion here. Okay, so eight minutes, and each one minute is 60 seconds. So we're looking at 480 seconds of time. And now we're going to use this amperage as a conversion factor. So this is why it's important to know that an amp is a coulomb per second. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 0 0.138 coulombs per one second. So this is our amperage here, but now we're using it to convert from time into charge. Okay, so now we know how much charge we would produce, or would be flowing through this whole circuit. Now what we want to do is change that into chemical form. So we're going to change charge into moles of electrons using the Faraday constant, 96,500. Okay, so now I'm changing the charge into how many electrons and moles and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to treat those moles of electrons as a reactant. So two moles of electrons produces one mole of copper. And the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change moles of copper into grams. So if I take 8 times 60 times 0.138 coulombs times 63.55 and divide by 96,500 and divide by 2, will tell me how many grams of copper I produce. The number comes out to 0 0.0218 grams of copper. Now, that's not very much, so we're running this for eight minutes and we get very, very little copper. We're not running a very large current, but that's decent. Uh, we're running for eight minutes and we're only getting a change in 0 0.021, 0 0.022 grams. So, using that number then, we now want to go back and say how much actual solution would I need to get that much copper chloride, or to get that much copper. So, we go back, we had our answer of 0 0.0218 grams of copper, which is 0 .0, yep, 0.000343 moles of copper. Okay, so what this is getting at is at the very beginning of the problem, that we've probably forgotten about by now, we started with the 0 0.01 molar solution. So molarity is how many moles you have per liter of solution. So this question is asking, well, how, much, how many liters do you need to be able to get this amount of moles? So what we want to say here is that we need 0 0.000343 moles. How many liters will it take to get to that? So we're going to take x, move it over here, 0 0.01, move it over here. x liters is going to be equal to 0 0.0003.3 divided by 0 0.01 molar. And that's going to come out to be 0 0.0343 liters. And that's not really a, a value we'd stick with. If we would change that into milliliters, we would need 34.3 milliliters. So you probably want to start with at least 35 milliliters to get this whole thing to run to the point where stoichiometrically you have enough copper present in the solution to be able to produce that many moles of copper through electrolysis. Okay. All right, cool. Now, in F, we're going to change gears here and look a little more back at analysis of just straight up redox type thing. So F says, what's a better oxidizing agent, copper 2 plus or zinc 2 plus? When you read oxidizing agent, I recommend that you change that to what's better at being reduced. Whatever's reduced is the agent by which something else is oxidized. And so 
uh, we're looking for, if we write out the reduction reactions for these two things, which one is preferable? So copper 2 plus, plus 2 electrons, turning into copper, has a voltage of 0.34. I don't know why I'm writing this, they're right here. So here we have this reaction, and we're comparing them to zinc 2 plus, which is this reaction. So which one is preferable? What these voltages are, essentially, they're comparisons to the standard hydrogen electrode, but effectively what they are then is which things are good at taking or losing electrons. So here we're looking at reduction, taking electrons from something else. The copper 2 plus has a greater affinity for electrons, is how we would read these voltages. Copper 2 plus is better at being reduced, and therefore copper 2 plus would be the better oxidizing agent. So the fact that it has a more positive and larger voltage zinc means that that would be a better oxidizing agent. Alright, then in G here we're looking at what combination of half reactions will give us the highest voltage of copper, zinc, and silver. So if we look at our voltages, we have plus 0.34, we have plus 0 0.80, and negative 0.76. So we want the widest gap possible because one of those is going to have to be changed to sign so that we can end up with an oxidation reduction. So we're going to take zinc, and we're going to take silver, and we're going to keep the silver as is. So silver plus, plus an electron, produces silver. That's plus 0.8 volts. And then we're going to have the zinc be oxidized, which is going to change it from a negative 0.76 to a positive 0.76. Then from there, we just need to add the two together. So our total voltage for our battery is 1.56 volts. Now, if we had hooked up uh, copper and zinc, that would have been 1.1 volts. If we had done copper and silver, that would have only been 0.46 volts. So this is our best voltage we can produce from, from those three options. Okay. And that makes sense, of course, in that we have a very reactive metal and a very unreactive metal. So one thing is good at the ions taking electrons. This is a good oxidizing agent or good at being reduced. This is a good reducing agent, we're good at being oxidized. And so the two pair well to produce a lot of energy as the electrons move from one cell to the other, and therefore we have a large voltage. Now, write out the complete and balanced reaction for this battery, and then which direction will the cations and the salt bridge flow towards. Okay, so for the complete and balanced reaction, we have silver plus zinc metal, turning into zinc two plus, plus silver metal. And so what we want to do to balance that is we just need to balance the charge. So we have a 2 plus over here. So we're going to need a 2 there and a 2 there. Which we could have done using the electrons. Uh, we had a 1 electron for the silver half reaction, 2 for the zinc. But we'd end up with the same thing. Okay. Now which direction would the cations and the salt bridge flow? So cations will always flow towards the cathode. Hey look, that seems to work out pretty nicely. So as the cations are flowing towards the cathode, this question really is saying, what's the cathode? So the cathode is where the reduction occurs. So, um, so we're looking for what's being reduced in this case. So the thing that's being reduced is the silver ions being reduced to silver. Now, the location where this reaction is occurring is the silver metal. So the silver ions are being reduced at at the silver cathode. And so what direction would the cations and salt bridge flow towards? They would flow towards the silver cathode. Okay. Uh, and what's happening there is essentially you're gaining electrons in the cathode, right? This is being reduced. And so in order to keep your charge balanced, in, in light of this excess negative charge coming in, you're going to need the cations from the salt bridge to flow in, so you end up with the with a neutral charge overall, so it doesn't shut down your battery. All right, and the final question. We're going to take that 1.56 volts, and we're going to do some calculations. So calculate gives free energy. And your equilibrium constant for this reaction. So before we start, we can do this qualitatively. So a positive voltage should, should give us a gives free energy that is negative, and it should give us an equilibrium constant that is bigger than 1. So now we're going to do our calculations with that. So let's start with our Gibbs free energy. Our Gibbs free energy calculation is negative N F E naught cell. So N is the number of electrons transferred in the reaction. So if we go back to our balanced reaction here, there's 2 AG plus 
plus zinc yields zinc 2 plus plus 2 so. Now, for that reaction, what's happening for the electron transfer is that two electrons are moving from each zinc to these two silver plus one ions. So it's N equals two because we're moving two electrons from here to here. You can get that from the half reactions really easily. If you look up the zinc and the zinc two plus, it's plus two electrons. And then if you look up the balanced half reaction, it's two Ag plus plus two electrons. So that two is what this means by N. So we're gonna plug in negative two. Faraday's constant is 96,500. And the voltage is 1.56. So we're gonna multiply those all together and we're gonna end up with negative, I don't remember, it's gonna be negative 301, uh, 80, so negative 301,000 joules per mole, which I would wanna see that rewritten as negative 301 kilojoules per mole. Okay. So those are Gibbs free energy and we get a negative value, check, very large, so that means it's highly, highly spontaneous. And then for our equilibrium constant, that's going to be equal to E to the negative delta G naught over RT. Now, what units do I use for these? So RT is going to be in units of joule per mole Kelvin, so I need this to be in joules per mole to get this to work. So I need E to the negative we're looking at a negative of a negative, so negative 301,000 divided by 8.314. And it doesn't give us a temperature, so we're going to assume it's a standard temperature, um, given that we're using standard voltage, so 298 Kelvin. So we're going to simplify that down. Now that's going to become a positive value. And what we're going to end up with is 5.98 times 10 to the 50 seconds. So essentially here, we're looking at a number almost beyond comprehension of how large it is. Um, and so, so essentially, we're going to end up with everything reacted and no reactant left um, for all intents and purposes, uh, which again makes sense with our very large negative delta G value and our very large voltage. That all clicks. We're, we're having a heavily product favored reaction, very heavily product reaction favored, uh, and that would be how you do the calculations for that.